Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So previously I was looking to make a new FPV camera latency board because the current one that I have is very fragile and um, I got the perfect setup. I know what I want now and I've designed it the other day if you missed that video and today it's actually here. I got it ordered from PCBWay. Huge shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So basically what we're doing is we're taking this board here and uh, we're setting it up on the new PCB design. Now let's go ahead and crack this open. This just came in from PCBWay, which actually didn't take quite long, just like four days or so. So as you can tell here, they give me a really nice pen and they do this, I think, with everybody. So it's a really good pen here. This is a prototyping pen from PCBWay. Thank you, PCBWay. And as you can tell here, we get the PCB boards and they are very nicely packaged. So this is really nice. So as you can tell here, I got 10 of them. Always recommended buy 10 instead of just five because it's the same price, really. So let's take a look at this. Now, this will do a lot of things. It'll break out all of the pins of the Arduino, if you've seen my previous video. We're also going to be able to incorporate that, uh, where is it? The, volt the Matec voltage regulator that I'm using for the current FPV camera latency tester, which is this one here. So we're gonna be able to take that out and put it right there. And here I'm gonna set up a female pin header so I could remove, pipe, uh, remove a Arduino and put it back so I can use it for other things. And here we have the video and the five volts and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and just start installing all the pin headers here. We'll come back and take a look at it and um, we'll take it from there. And just it just looks really, really nice here. I really like this. As you can tell, I did something new here. If you take a closer look, this is the copper that's etched out below. And it gave us that little writing right there, which is really nice. Uh, I really like that here. So let me prepare this and then uh, we come back and we take a look at how this thing will actually function here. All right guys, so here it is complete. This is its final form currently. So I'm using the Matec PDB here or the Matec voltage regulator to step down the voltage from a 4S down to five volt to power everything, including the camera and the LED, which we'll take a look at right now. Now, as you can tell right here, I've set up two video inputs basically. And what that means is it'll allow me to give five volt in ground and video to the camera. I mean, it doesn't give me video to the camera. I get to receive the video, which is routed to one of these pins where I can put my oscilloscope probe here so I can test the latency of the camera. As you can tell, I'll just come in like this, boom, and then I just ground my oscilloscope right here, and that's it, that's for camera one or camera two, whatever, because I have two inputs here now. And uh, for the LED, it is going to be on D2. So as you can tell, I put female and male headers because later on, maybe I need to do something else and I don't want to solder directly to the Arduino. So I can just bring in these uh, dew point connectors and I can just uh, install them right here and that's going somewhere else, which will make it a lot easier for me when I'm prototyping into other things. So this this do, this do serves as more than one, it does just more than one thing basically. And this is what I really wanted. And sometimes the issue that I have is uh, five volts, giving something five volts because I ran out of USB ports. And this is a really great way to do it. Look how many five volt in grounds I have. So obviously it's not gonna handle that much current because we're using this guy, but it should get the job done. If I needed to power up a receiver or a camera just to double check it, then I can easily do that from here, which is something uh, I, I find to be very useful. So I currently left them blank because I'm not in need of them. And usually I like to solder really quick. So that's why I didn't put any pin headers or anything of that nature. So let's take a look at these pads here. So right now, uh, these are going to the camera, five volt ground and video. The five volt and ground are actually both going to the LED also. And the video is just getting piped to this right there. 
and the LED right here. It's connected down here. I'll, I'm going to create some kind of a connector for this, but I'll, I'm going to do that later on. Uh, but right now, I just soldered it in the back for quick use. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look how this is actually connected inside. So there's four wires going in here. One is going to be for the LED signal. So for power, they're both sharing the five volt rail. So there's just two wires, ground and power, and it's getting split into these two. However, there's also an extra two wires, which is the signal for this to control this LED, and also the signal of the video signal from the FPV camera, so we can actually test the latency here. And it's a very simple, basic design. I just, just close this up, and when this LED turns on, the camera would see that there's some kind of a light. And this is also RGB LED, so later on what I can do is switch between colors and see if the latency is also exactly the same. And um, I just really wanted to create this uh, board for it here. And uh, it's working really great, actually. However, let's do a quick test. And we're not going to do a quick test with my big oscilloscope because I've gotten a new oscilloscope that just came out. It's called the DS213. Uh, this is just like the other portable oscilloscope. However, this has four channels, which is really amazing. And it also, it's charged via USB and it also has a waveform generator. So you can, you know, do something if you wanted to do some kind of signal, send some sort of a custom signal, you can do that. And this is still the beta firmware. So I'm just gonna boot this guy up, make sure I have the correct channels for each. So I want channel one to be on the video, which is currently channel A. So that's taking the video here. And now I want my trigger point. So we can calculate the difference between the LED turning on and actually seeing it in the video signal here. So I'm just gonna set this up on pin two. There we go. So I have that set up on pin two to tell me when the LED was initialized and I'm also gonna ground this right here. So we're gonna put these guys down. We're gonna bring this over and let's go ahead and set this guy up. So what we want first is we want DC. So channel one is going to be DC and I'm gonna set it to two volts per division, uh, which means every square is two volts up. And then for my this is going to be the signal that will actually, which is on channel two, which will tell us when the LED turned on. So this, this line would go up like this if the LED turned on. So I'm going to set it up also in two volts per division. I'm going to turn off channel three and the last channel also. So we're going to turn those off because we don't need them. And then we could just leave a bit more memory or a bit more processing power into this. And this is the sample rate. We're just going to do something like 1K is going to be more than enough. The trigger, this is very important because we want this to trigger on yellow, which is channel two. And you can change this just like this. So, oh, sorry. So this would trigger on channel three. You see the color. So we want it on yellow. And this here will tell us when the LED turns on. Auto, we'll leave it auto for now. Uh, this here is for the waveform generator. We're not going to need that. And let's go ahead and just plug everything and double check everything if everything is working here. So I just gave power. So we can already see the video signal and we can see the LED turning off and on. All right, so we need to make a bit more sense of this. So what we need to do first is we need to set a trigger point. So first what I need to do is I need to capture more data. So I need to make it like two milliseconds per division. As you can tell, the software is still kind of buggy, but it still gets the job done. You're gonna need to use it on single mode. So we're gonna capture one waveform so we, first we want to see also the trigger level. So the trigger, you see this yellow line here? We want it to be, you know, to tell it once the voltage reaches above that, then to trigger. So we need to go back to the V trig here. And we just set it up like somewhere here. So we, we tell it basically once the yellow line goes above this, then stop and take that sample. So we can start actually calculating something. And we're going to go to single. So we're going to take a single sample here. It's, it's not as accurate. It doesn't always get it perfect on time. Sometimes it takes quite a while. So we got our first sample here. Now I know on my big oscilloscope, I got anywhere between 1.3 milliseconds and two milliseconds on this camera here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable our time, which is this one here. So this is time one, okay. And we're gonna move that to right where the LED turned on, which is right there. And then we're going to go to the next one. We're going to enable it also. And we're going to go right where the where we can see it in the video feed. As you can tell, the LED was off, off, off. And this is where it registered in the video feed here. So we can go here and then just line it up. Perfect. Okay. I think right about here is good. And now you might say, okay, well, where, where is it going to tell me? Well, you have to scroll down and change one of these two here. So we can just change that. There we go. 
So this one, this this sample was 1.8 milliseconds of latency. We can take another sample. We're just clicking the play button again. So we're going to take another sample here. Now everything is set up for us. So we don't have to do a lot of things. All we got to do is just move the time now. So let's just go. We need T2 here. There we go. And then we can just align it perfectly. I think the sample was right about here, uh, which is 2.2 milliseconds. It is pretty accurate. This is really nice. It's a really nice clean board. Unlike how we had it before, which was something like this and a bunch of wires below. And um, yeah, this is just looking way better. And it's just really pleasant and nice to look at. And again, it's modular and we can use it for a lot of things. So if you really, if you wanted one or you wanted to get into kind of FPV camera latency testing, uh, you can easily do this for under, I would say 150 bucks. Uh, if you're going to buy one of those little oscilloscopes like I showed you here, the DS, I'll have two linked down below. There's one with two channels and there's this one. The one with two channels a little bit cheaper, but the software is really good. Uh, this one's a little bit faster, has more channels, but the software is not ready 100%. So you probably want something a bit more reliable, which is the, the cheaper one. I'll have them linked down below and go ahead and check them out. And also have a link to this board down below. If you want to go ahead and pick it up, all you're going to need is an Arduino, uh, the Matek regulator and some pin headers and some female pin headers. And um, it's really nice because now it's just super modular and a huge shout out to PCB way. Uh, I really love how fast they got this done for me. I just got it like an hour ago in the mail or so, or two hours ago, we can say. Uh, and we ordered it, what, like three days ago, I think, or four days ago. It was last week. So yeah, it came in really, really quick. And uh, if you missed how I designed this, you can go ahead and check that video. I'll have it also linked down below. And um, yeah, here's its original or here's its final form uh, pre-manufactured and done. And it's just looking absolutely beautifully sexy. I do love this color, the blue color. I was going to I was gonna try a different color, but then I just decided not to. Um, so yeah, I'll have everything linked down below. Make sure you check out PCBWay. Huge shout out to them for sponsoring most of these videos and enabling me to do some kind of a project like this. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll have a link to everything down below. Go ahead and check those out. Those greatly support the channel. And if you like this channel, please consider joining my Patreon. I do have a lot of awesome projects, which I need a little support on, which would go an absolute long way. And well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.